So part two, we're going to look at the horizontal asymptote. So I kind of described it here as the curve is, is going up, 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 but it never crosses the line y equal to d. So what I want to look at is how would you actually figure that out? Well, each of these that we figured out with the vertical asymptote, you can also determine the horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is going to use a technique of finding the limit. And I think probably the best way to do it is to look at the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x over x plus 3. All right? So if we were to graph it, what it's going to do is it's going to have at negative 3, x equal negative 3, you're going to have a vertical asymptote. And so it's probably going to do something like, oh, I would guess something like this. And then from here, it's going to just come from negative infinity. Then it's going to go up, 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 and then it's going to flatten out. And it's going to flatten out at a specific place. It's going to flatten out at y equal to something. Well, that something can be found by saying, okay, where are these x values going to? Well, the x values are going to infinity. So since the x values are going to infinity, then all we have to do is look at the limit as x goes to infinity, and we should be able to find what that y value is. And if we know what that y value is, we'll be able to say that's the equation for the horizontal asymptote, which will be y equal to, because it's a this purple flat line. So how do you do it? Well, we're going to take each of these, call this a term, this a term, this a term, three different terms. And we're going to divide by the greatest exponent of x, which in this case is x to the first. So before we take the limit, we're going to do some algebra. x over x is 2. x over x, or 2x over x is 2. x over x is 1 plus 3 over x. Now, this 3 over x is interesting because what we're saying is, what if you had three donuts and you divided it by, you know, six people? Well, you would get a half a donut each if you shared it evenly. If you had... 60 people, then it would be, um, what is it, 1 20th of a donut. And it, the bigger and bigger x gets, if you had all the people in the world sharing three donuts equally, there is, each of them is going to get practically nothing. So three donuts divided by infinity is pretty much no donuts. So 2 over 1 is going to be your horizontal asymptote, y equal to 2 is going to be my horizontal asymptote for this, for this one. Well, if we backtrack and look at this, going back, you can see there's a pattern here. If you looked at this equation, you could say, hmm, instead of doing all this work, why not just say it's the coefficient of x over the coefficient of this x? 2x over x is just going to be 2. This 3 didn't do anything. Okay, So whenever you can see two of the greatest powers being the same, like in this number 4, in this number 4 you have 1x squared over 1x squared. Well, that's 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. Uh, y equals 1 would be your horizontal asymptote. Same with this one. 1x squared over <coughs> Excuse me. 1x squared over 1x squared will be 1. And horizontal asymptote will be y equal to 1. So that's all you have to do. As long as those exponents are the same, and if you look at this one here, we don't quite have that. So we're going to use another little technique, and that is f of x equals 2x over x squared minus 3. You can always put in, you can always add 0 to anything. And I'm going to add 0x squared plus 2x. 
now I have the x squared and x squared, and then the coefficient is 0 over 1. And so what is 0 over 1? But 0. So this first one will have a horizontal asymptote. It will be y equals 0. Let's try it the other way. The limit as x goes to infinity, because that's what horizontal asymptotes are, let's see what that is. Well, we had 2x over x squared minus 3. So if we divide by x squared to each of these three terms, you're going to get the limit as x goes to infinity. 2x over x squared is 2 over x, and x squared over x squared is 1 minus 3 over x squared. And each of these will go, two donuts divided by an infinite number of people is 0 donut per person. 3 over an infinite number of people squared gets there even faster, 0. So this is just going to be 0 over 1 minus 0, or 0. Notice my little trick of adding the 0x squared makes it pretty quick and easy to figure out. All right, so we talked about that. And now what we can do is we can take a problem like number 8, and we can find all of these things about it. So let's do it. Let's do it. So you're going to first find the domain. Well, if we factor this 4x over x plus 2, x minus 2, will those x plus 2 or x minus 2s cancel out? They will not. So in this case, your domain is going to be all real numbers except negative 2 and positive 2. And that will be your domain. Uh, vertical asymptotes will be what these will set equal to 0 will be x equal to negative 2 and x equal to 2. You just set that equal to 0 and that equal 0 and you get it. For the holes, nothing cancels. So there's no holes in this one. And then if we want to find the horizontal asymptote, then what you do is you take the limit as x goes to infinity of 4x over x squared minus 4. And I'm going to add 0 times x squared and use my little trick and say, OK, the greatest exponent of x is x squared. So 0 over 1 is 0. So my horizontal asymptote is y equal to 0. So if you actually tried to graph this, you'd have a vertical asymptote at negative 2, vertical asymptote at 2, and you wouldn't uh, you'd have a horizontal asymptote here, and then plot a few points. And I think it's going to be something like this. And I'm not sure what happens in between. We can put a 0 in. It's going to be 0. Put in a 1. You'll get 4 over negative. So it'll be negative. So it's going to go down. It'll look something like that. But look at how much information you can get from horizontal asymptote, vertical asymptote, and domain. Right. So then what you're going to do is the circled problems and do all the things that we did. If they cancel out, and I can tell you there'll be some canceling out in number 9, if they cancel out like x minus 8 over x minus 8, you would see, say there's a hole at x equal to 8. Here's a little word problem that has a rational function to it. Should be pretty easy. And then we get a chance to um, apply your regression skills with your calculator. You just put this in your calculator. And then answer those questions. You're going to use um, a power function, I think, is what you'll use. Look for power 
and that'll put that in for you. And then these are challengers. So you don't, I would say, if you can do these, these will help you with future R4s. 